December 1984. The Antarctic landscape is a glimmering, slippery expanse under the sun. Rough winds mold the ground into ripples, making the ice appear as soft and shiny as wax. Cracks here can be hundreds of feet deep, daisy white graves for anyone that falls inside. The cold needles its way into the crevices of jackets and gloves. It's a stark and unforgiving world. But these are also the best conditions in which to find meteorites nestled at the base of mountain ranges and preserved in sheets of old blue ice. The blue ice is exposed when the newer layers above are eaten away by winds. These winds push against the tents inside of which the scientists work. This occasion is proving to be very special. A meteorite found in the Allen Hills region, at the edges of the continent and on the cusp of the Southern Sea, weighs nearly five pounds and bears traces of fusion crust, a dark glassy texture formed when the meteorite cut a burning path through the Earth's atmosphere, right before colliding with our southernmost continent. Once there, it was preserved for 13,000 years. Some researchers believe the rock looks green from the inside, though the color is duller when it's properly at the labs and undergoing studies. It's a piece of Martian crust almost as old as the solar system itself. Cracks reveal damage incurred some 4 billion years ago, with the rock being a full 4.1 billion years old altogether. An impact with an asteroid or a comet dislodged the chunk of rock from the red planet and sent it spacebound 13 to 16 million years in the past, commencing its own odyssey through the tundra of the universe. Since landing, ALH-84001 has been the topic of controversy and fascination. Residing in its cracks is what appears to be our first encounter with alien life. The cracks contained granules of calcium carbonate, a residue produced when mineral-rich water absorbs carbon dioxide. In everyday life, we see calcium carbonate in seashells, or stalactite formation in the heart of caves. The granules not only pointed to the presence of water, but were also similar in size and shape to granules created by bacteria here on Earth. Dating revealed they were billions of years old, meaning that they must have formed back on Mars and not at some point in the 13,000 years that the rock had been on Earth. Placing the fossils under an electron microscope showed an exciting pattern of chains surrounded by membranes just what you see with terrestrial bacteria when it forms magnetite crystals. Magnetite crystals are navigation tools. They help bacteria make use of our planet's geomagnetic field. To date, crystals of this shape and purity are always found as products of biological processes. They are always found to result from life. And according to biologists from NASA's research center, it is just this crystallized magnetite structure that's been found in a meteorite. The magnetite resides within the carbonate mineral dated at 3.9 billion years old, again leading us to the conclusion that it could not have come from Earth. The first signs of life on Earth arguably emerged around 3.5 to 3.7 billion years ago and are imprinted in our fossil record as rocks decorated with filaments and layered structures of cyanobacteria. If ALH-84001 is evidence for life, then it is possibly evidence for the oldest life form we've ever encountered an alien, predating even our own origins. While Mars today doesn't have the right conditions to spur magnetite production in bacteria, there is reason to believe liquid oceans in a magnetic field in the planet's past could have encouraged Martian organisms to begin making magnetite. However, there is some dispute with the idea that magnetite is a purely biological process. Some claim that this is premature and cannot be used to support the case of life in ALH-84001. Instead, an event could have heated the carbonate and then abiotically created the magnetite. But the problem here is that the cooling time would have had to be extremely precise in order for the magnetite not to be either too uniform or too imperfect. The largest fossil within the meteorite was 10 times smaller than the smallest bacteria known at the time. The life signatures within ALH84001 would have come from nanobacteria which didn't leave enough DNA in their fossils for scientists to replicate. However, Alien life doesn't necessarily have to produce DNA or be bound by the size and shape patterns seen on Earth. 
It's even been proposed that the fossil shapes don't come from any organisms at all, but are surface imperfections in the coating used for electron microscopy. And then there's this argument. The pictures of the meteorite show organization. Organization is one of the main characteristics of life. More than movement, reproduction, evolution, or growth, what separates the living from the lifeless is the fact that our very structure goes against what the universe most seeks. The law of entropy says that the universe tends towards thermal equilibrium and that this is what will bring about the end of the universe. This organization is statistically much more likely than organization, making life itself, with all its organization, an anomaly. The elongated, segmented shapes in ALH84001 look back at us, burning and enticing, and yet unwilling to reveal what they really are. They mimic life so much in appearance, their familiar worm-like bodies and their proximity to minerals and carbonate. Yet their fossils don't appear in different stages of growth or reproduction. They're quiet, small and ordered, perhaps too small for the proteins or molecules necessary for the metabolic processes of life. But that's only life as we know it to exist here on Earth. This might be the case of life as we've yet to see it, hailing from an alien beginning and adhering to alien traits. No scientific consensus has ever been reached regarding ALH84001.